Right. Now, now uh, the previous uh, lecture we were looking at the socket structures. Right? So we look in detail what the socket structure is, and then uh, the components of it. Then also how to use them, right? what they represent. In this particular chapter, we are going to look at the socket functions, the main socket functions, which allow us to make a connection to, between client and server. Right? We have used them before in examples, but uh, here we're going to look at in detail what it's all about, right? how, the, how the functions, how they work in the background to make the connection between the client and the server successful. So just to recap, this is what the communication happens between client and, client and the server. Right? So if you see that uh, on the server side, so first of all, before we do anything on the server side, we need to create a socket, create an empty socket, then we will bind the socket with the port as well as the IP address. Then the we will start a listening process on the server. Listening basically is to start waiting for incoming connections from clients. So once a client connection comes in, then the accept function will go into work and then accept the incoming client connection. So client side, we, we, we create an empty socket and then we will connect the socket to the server. So this is the, the part where the client will try to communicate with the server. So the accept, accept function must be running on the server side for the connect to establish communication. So once accept is running on the server, if a connect communication comes from the client, then the server, the server will accept the connection from the client and now the connection has been established. That means now the client and server are connected by this particular socket. So now the client and server can send and receive data between them. Right? So in this example given here, the client can write the data to the socket meaning that the client is sending the data from the client to the server. So for server to obtain the data sent by the client, it must, it must execute a read function, right, which we saw in the previous lecture. So once the server reads, then it can obtain the data sent by the client. Then the server might want to reply to the, to the client, then it will execute the write function put the data into the socket and then send it across then the server then the client will actually do a read so that it can uh, get the data which was sent by the server so this read and write between client and server happens in continuously right so one side read the other side read. one side write the other side read one side, uh, and then the other side can write again and then opposite side will read so read and write opposite fashion they happen right? until one of them decides to close. Normally it's the client which will close. So once close means then the server will also try to close both sides. Right? So these are the basic functions which are required in socket, socket connection between client and server. So we have seen the read and write previously. So today we're going to look at all these main functions, socket, bind, listen, accept, connect, as well as close. Right, so what actually do they, do they do? So let's start with the first one. The socket function. Right? This is basically to create a socket. This, we have seen this before. This is the, the example or rather the, the, call, the, call, the calling program. And sorry, the, the calling example, how, how you use it in your program. So there are three parameters to the socket function to create a socket the family, the type, and the protocol. Right? And then it will return one value, integer. So this return, if everything goes OK, then it will return a non-negative, a positive number, which becomes your socket ID. If, if the socket function returns 
Negative one, that means the socket could not be created. So there was an error. All right? Then you try again. All right. So the family, the parameter family, there are four or five types here. We have seen that earlier. We have used the first two, AFINet and AFINet6. Right, so when you say we create a socket, we, we, need, we need to indicate what type of socket do we want to create, whether it's IPv4 version or IPv6. Right, so we create it, we, we use the parameter to indicate to the socket which type do you want. There are a few more types, Unix domain protocols, routing sockets, key sockets, which are quite advanced, which we are not going to cover in this particular class. Right, so we're only going to use the first two, right, which we have seen the examples. So that's the family type. Then we have the socket type, the second parameter. Here we want to indicate what type of socket it is. Not a family is one, this is a type of socket, whether it's TCP socket, UDP socket, or even the other one, the streaming, the SCTP socket. You use, you want to create a UDP socket, we will use a SOC diagram. So the example you have seen in the client, in a simple, uh, daytime client server, we have been using SOC stream. Right? And the third protocol and the third parameter is the protocol. So this protocol applies to the first two family types, AFINet and AFINet6. Right? So you go back to the family type. So when you when you use one of these two, AFINet or AFINet6, then we can specify the which type of protocol do we want. Right. So there are three types again, the TCP, UDP, and the SCTP. Right. So normally, what in the example we have seen earlier in the program, we use protocol of zero. Right. It says create a protocol, AFINet. AFINet is family type. SOC stream is the type of socket. And then we say the third parameter is zero, meaning that we're going to take the default value for, for the family and type selected by systems. So now most of the time will be the TCP. Right? So if you say I select AFINet, means IPv4 version, and then in the socket type we say SOC stream. You want to create a stream socket, then automatically it will select the first version, TCP. Right? If you're, you say AFINet, again I, IPv4 socket type, but this time you want to create a UDP packet, UDP socket, you say SOC D datagram, and then the protocol will automatically will be selected as protocol UDP. Right? So if you see protocol, if you set protocol zero, then these values, the one values, three values in, in the table will be selected automatically from there by the system. Uh, so most of the time we sort of set a protocol to zero, as the example given in the uh, code. Okay? So there are three, since there are three parameters, so there are a few combinations uh, which, which we can work with, but not all combinations are possible. So the example given here is that between family and type, right? so if you have AFI, AFINet, then when you say SOC stream, then automatically it will create a TCP socket or SCTP socket. Right? If you say datagram, then this only can be used with UDP sockets. Right? Same thing for IPv6 also. The rest we can just ignore because we're not using them. Right. Okay, so socket is basically simple, right? The socket function is just to create an empty socket. And it will return a socket ID right, if, if it's successful. This which will be used in the late in the later uh, in the code. So once a socket has been created, empty socket has been created, right? Then we have the connect function, right? Again, we have seen this, how, how it's being used. So there are one, two, three parameters there. Right? The socket ID, the socket address, pointed to the socket address, and then the length of the socket address. And again, if everything goes well, it will return zero if the connect, if the connect has been successful. Right? Remember, connect is, used by, connect is used by the client. Uh, if you go back to the previous first diagram we saw, connect is used by the client to, to try to establish connection with the server. Right? So if the con if connection is successful, that means the 
socket has been connected to the server. So what the connect does is that it will initiate a three-way handshake. Right? So the moment this, the connect function runs, it will try to communicate with the server and by handshaking. Right? So handshaking involves the three the three-way handshake, right? It sends a SYN packet, the client sends a SYN packet, synchronization packet to the server. Server replies with, a, with its own SYN packet plus acknowledgement. Then the client will send an acknowledgement back to the server. So once this three-way handshake is complete, only then the connect will be returned or successful. Right? So this is the SYN packet. So the result will be returned is if everything went, goes well, then we say the connection established. That means now the three-way handshake is successful, the server has been found, and so on. So the socket is now connected. Or if error happens, then we report error, which is normally negative one. Right. Now, what type of errors can happen? Right, when it tries to, when the client tries to connect to a server. Remember, we're trying to do, we're not sending data, any data yet. We're only trying to do a handshake with the, so client trying to do a handshake with the server. So the first type is that the client does not receive any response to the handshake. Right, so the client sent a SYN packet to the server, no response. Wait, 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 nothing happens. Right? So in this case, the client will wait for a certain amount of time before he sends you a message saying timeout. Right? So will, the error will be E timeout, saying that, okay, the client waited, 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 10 minutes, 20 minutes, nothing happens, no response from the server, I give up. All right? This is like say, handshake, handshaking, right? I want to handshake with you, right? I want to handshake with you, what do I do? I put up my hand, right? If he doesn't put up his hand, what happens? I wait, 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 wait. After a while, I get fed up, right? So I put back my hand. So time out, because I did not get any response. Right, so that's the first one, time out. Second one, second one again, the client tried to handshake. The servers refused, they say, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to handshake with you. The first one, no response. Second one is they say no. Right, so the server resets the connection. I'm sorry, the client receives a reset from the server. Right, so I try to handshake, put my, give my hand to this person, this person run away. Now, or, or, or try to beat me up, or try to hit me on the head. So that kind of thing, so reset. So that means now, why this happens is that the server is not, the server is running, the server is there, right? But the server does not refuse to handshake. I think some of you, when you run your client, client server program, you did get this message, connection refused. Some of you were running it, right? And why you get that is because the server was running on a different port. Your client was running on one port number, and then your server was running on a different port number. When the client tries to connect, client say, I want to connect to you using this port. Server say, servers will say, go away, because I'm not running this, I, I'm not running this particular port number, this service, so I refuse. I refuse to connect with you because we are not the same port number. Right? So, this, so this is what will happen. So if the service is not running, you, will, you get the connection refused. Right? For example, you try to, let's say you, from, this is your browser and this is your, uh, this is your server running here. You're running a daytime server, port 13. Here you open your browser and say try to connect to that particular uh, IP address say I want to connect to HTTP, open a browser, and there's no browser running there. So of course you'll get a connection refused, right? because that same service is not running. So that's the second type, connection refused. The third type is that the host is unreachable or the network is un unreachable. Means now the router cannot find the server at all. You give IP number, the router searches, search, cannot find a way, cannot find a path to it. Either the server is not, is not around, is not, does not exist, or something, along, something happens along the way, there's no path for the router to locate from the source 
to your destination. All right, so this is normally given by the intermediate router. So it will send an ICMP packet saying destination unreachable or, or uh, so host unreached or network unreached. Right, which we can try afterwards later on. You try to simulate this and see what, what happens. Right? All right, so these are three types of errors you can get. Right? Remember, we are trying to do a handshake between the client and the server. All right, so these are examples. Here, we are running a daytime client, try to connect to this particular server. So if everything goes well, then you will get a, a response from the server. Now, if you run another particular number, here, he says timeout. So that means he's trying to connect to this particular machine. Wait, long time, no response, give up. After some time, right? Timeout. The second one, try to run, try to get, try to connect with a, a, a different uh, server now. This servers, this server exists. I mean, it's there, but it refuses to connect with you because it's not running the same service. And a third type. Another server, this one, the router says, I, I do not know how to get there. I cannot find a path to it. Right? So basically, you can actually check. I mean, the error, error returned from the, the connect function can be used to trace, right, to find out what actually is going on. Next function is bind. Right? Now, bind is only done on the server, right? The connect was used on the client. The bind is done on the server. So what the bind does, as we have seen earlier, we, earlier we cre create a socket on the server. Then we will insert the server's port number and the IP number into the socket structure. And then we will bind this information. We will bind the socket structure to the socket. That's what we will do. Right, so it assigns a local prot protocol address to the socket. So the local protocol address is basically a combination of IP address and port number. Right, so these two will be combined and attached to the socket. So next time, you just use the socket and the, machine, and the server will know how to get to the other side because the, the IP number and the port number has been compressed into one, one, one uh, information, which is the socket. Right? So this is normally done, done on a server. So again, what we need is that we provide the socket ID, the socket we have created earlier here, yeah? and then we will also pass the address of the socket structure which we have created, and then which also inclu in includes the, the IP number of the, of the server plus the port number which we have assigned earlier, as well as the length of the socket address passed here. So again, it will return value, it return zero, if everything goes well, can bind, or negative one it, if it's error, right? I think some of you also saw last week when you tried to run the server, it says bind error. Some of you, I think, got it, right? Because that means that particular port number has been bound to the previous socket, and then you try to bind again, same socket number to the same IP number, uh, same uh, port number to the same IP number again before releasing it, then you will say a bind error. Right? So you normally wait for a while until the system to clear it. Right? So when we're specifying the IP address and the port number, we have used, uh, on the server side, we have used the wildcard. Right? We use in address any, remember that, that time? Right, so this wildcard means that the kernel or the OS will choose the IP address. So if you say port zero, we don't specify the port, we don't specify the IP address. Means that now the OS will select the IP address assigned to the machine automatically. We don't fix it, we don't hard code it in other words. Right. For the server side, normally we will, the IP number we don't assign we don't hard code it, but the port number normally we fix it because we want to run the server on a particular port number or service. So you run a daytime server, we put port 13 or 1213, whatever it is. 
so that we know that this particular server will run on this particular port. IP number, whichever IP number assigned to the machine, it will automatically pick up. So IP number normally on the server, we will say it is wildcard, right? And port number normally we fix. We can also do the other way around, and then uh, say uh, we can fix a IP number also, right? See, this this server when we run it, we we, we want to run it with this particular fixed IP address, right? The one we hard code, right? so you can do that way also. Okay, so there there are a few combinations here. So the, to to be so on the server side, normally we use the second option. That means IP number is the IP number we don't fix. We take the default, and then the port number we fixed. Right. So now the server has has already a socket created for it, and then the information, the socket, the, the protocol, local protocol address has been bound to, to the socket. Next, the server can start the process of listening or waiting for waiting for incoming connections from the clients. Right. So we, do, we run a bind function now. So bind function, again, very simple. We just say the socket ID which we have created, and then uh, uh, another parameter, the backlog, and then it will return a value, say, if, 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 if the listening starts, then it says it was return zero, means it's okay. Next thing, one, it's not. Right. So we, when you start listening, you only, we only have to need to refer to the socket ID now, right? because socket ID contains everything, all information, because it was bind earlier with IP address, with the port number and all that. So now the socket knows which port address to listen to and at which IP to look out for. Right? So we don't have to repeat again. So what the listen does is that it converts an unconnected socket into a passive socket, meaning that now the kernel is ready to accept incoming SIN requests. Right? The, so now with listening running, the server is ready to accept handshake requests from the clients. Right? Only after that. Before listen, it will not run. So this parameter, the backlog. OK, we'll go to backlog later. Let's look at this first. Right? So this is what happens. So this is our server running in listening mode. Right? So look at this diagram. So when the packet arrives, the SYN packets arrive, the handshaking packets arrive, it will be kept in a queue. Right? So we keep the incoming SYN packets in a queue. Why we keep in a queue? Because we cannot straight away connect with them. We need to wait for the hand handshake to be completed. And there are three stages in the handshake. Right? The server receives the SYN packet. It must send its own scene and acknowledge, and then wait for the reply from the client. So it, it, puts, its, it puts the incoming scene into a we call incomplete connection queue. Wait here until the, until the handshaking is complete. Once handshaking is complete, it will move it into another queue, the top queue. So here is a completed connection. So that means a three-way handshake has been completed. Now the server can start accepting, can run the accept function, which means that the server can now connect directly with the client using that particular socket. Right? So there's, a two, there's two levels, right? There, there are two queues implemented in the listen here now. So it's, it's important to, to differentiate between the two. One is incoming SYN packets. While waiting for the handshake to complete, you put in incomplete queue. Once the handshaking is over, you move them to the completed one. Only once they move to completed, then only the socket is connected to the client. Right? Right, so this is, this is the one. Right? So if you look at this diagram, the, when the first scene comes, the, the server receives the first scene, it will create entry into incomplete queue. Right? So wait, we wait until these two phases complete, only then it will be moved to a, a complete uh, connection. Right? So there's a waiting period involved there. Right? So now the backlog. Right? So backlog basically specifies 
how many simultaneous connections can you have? The server. Right? So, for example, I'm the server. Right? Each one of you send me SYN packet. You send me a SYN, you start your handshake with me, right? So, I have to complete the three stages of the handshaking. So, I have to keep the process, I have to keep the information of each client trying to handshake with me in incomplete queue. Right? And then, once each one completes, then I move them into complete queue. So, the question is how many clients can I handle at one time? That's what the backlog is. So, it specifies maximum number of connections queued up by the socket. So, it completes both incomplete connection queue, scene received, waiting for the handshake to be completed, or the other one would be the, the completed connection queue, that means the handshake has been completed. So, you go back to the diagram again. So, the backlog is basically here. How many connections are we can process at one time? Incomplete as well as complete. Right, so here we have, so first we say there are four, let's say there are four connections coming in. Four clients try to connect together simultaneously to the server. So they will send SYN packets. So we open up four uh, un incomplete connections. So once one of them is completed, the handshake, then we we'll move them to here. Right, so the thing is how many How many uh, how many capacity how, how much capacity do we have to manage them? Right? How many how many can we uh, establish connection with clients total? Right. So it's basically queuing queuing process. So if you go back, uh, let's. I'm going to show you this one. Um, okay. If you remember the code, well, you might not remember the code. Let's look at the code. Right, this is the server. Server code. So if you see here, it says, "Listen." And we create a socket. We 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 insert the information about the, into the socket structure. We bind it. Now we listen. Right. And you see, listen. The second parameter of the list, so this is the first parameter is the socket which we created earlier. The second parameter is the backlog value. So in this case, it's a label, it's a constant, listen queue, which will be defined in somewhere here, right? So if I can quickly show you, so the thing is, what is the value, what is the value of this, right? So here, this particular function same thing, that means if, if what, if, what this function does is that it says if you do not want to use the maximum value defined in the unp.h file, the header file, you can declare your own. Right? You can declare your own. So what you try to do is you will get it from the environment, uh, this particular figure value, and then it will uh, use that figure to run your listen, listen function. Right? That means it, Basically, says that if you don't want to use 1024, you can define your own in environment environment variable somewhere in the Unix, and then you'll be able to obtain from that value from there. Doesn't matter. Not very important this function, right? The main things to not understand is that the backlog there is a limit to the number of connections which the server can handle at one time, right? Both incoming and completed. Right? That's the main thing. So this is defined by the backlog value in the backlog parameter in the listen function. So this is the example given. Different backlog values and the way it's implemented or handled in, in different implementations of the Unix, again, is a bit uh, mixed up, right? So it doesn't follow a particular rules, right? So, they, so in this case, we say, let's say we backlog of 10. So if you fix a value of 10, if you run your listen function on the Mac OS, the one as we have, it doesn't mean you will stop at 10, you will go until about 16. So you fix a value of 10, you can it allows you to make 16 connections. Right, so this is one they, they have done uh, the, the experiment to find out 
what the actual actual value of actual actual number of connections which can be active with a particular server with a fixed number of backlog value right okay next question is that what happens if the backlog value is reached right so once the backlog value is reached and new connections are coming in right so new handshakes are coming in so what do we do or, or rather what the server will do so what the server will do, it will not respond because it has, it has no capacity, right? So that means its buffers are now full. Buffers in here are basically full. It has allocated, let's say, 1024 buffers here. So once these are full, incoming handshake requests, you will just ignore because it has, it has no capacity for it anymore, right? So it will wait until some of them close the connection. So once you close connection, that means you, you release the particular socket, then the buffer will become available to be used by a, a new client connection. Right? So what this means is that if the queues are full, when the SYN packet arrives, the TCP just ignores the SYNs, right? ignore the handshake, but it does not send a reset. It does not say, I, I, I refuse connection with you. No. It doesn't, it doesn't say that. It will just keep quiet. Maybe you try again later, it might work when, there is, when the buffer is available. Right? So this, con this condition is considered temporary. Right? So the buffer full in the backlog is considered temporary because after the client has used, it will release the socket, the connection. So then the buffer will become empty and it will be able to use by someone else. Right? So there can be a long line of waiting like that. Right? So they say, if you talk too much, nobody will listen. Right? So I should also be careful about that too. All right? So if too many scenes coming in, then the server will, will, will say, okay, I cannot, I cannot process anymore. Right? Just keep quiet about it. All right? Okay, accept, right? So now, so listener was basically the handshaking part, right? So the connect function on the client sends a handshaking, which will be processed by the listen function on the server, right? Go back to the first diagram. Right, the connect function is the one which creates a handshake and this handshake will be handled by the listen. So once this is complete, only then the accept will be executed. So what the accept does is that it will convert the incomplete connection from the handshake into a completed connection. Right, so from, the, from the previous uh, diagram from the backlog, we can see that it will move the incoming connection from incomplete queue once the handshake is completed to the completed connection. So that means connection has been established. So now the, the accept function can work on this and then connect the socket directly to the client. So it returns completed connection from the front of the completed connection queue. Now, one thing you need, need to notice here is that the accept function returns a new descriptor for the connector socket. That means it sends accept returns a new socket ID, a new socket, right? which is the connected one. Right? So this, so the return value is a new socket ID. You, you give a socket, earlier socket, you, the earlier socket you create here will be passed on as a parameter. So once accept is successful, it will create a new socket which you will use to send and receive information between the client and the server. Right? So by the server normally. And then we also need to pass in the uh, another socket structure. This is the client address a socket structure and then also the length of that socket structure. So what it means is that now we are putting we need to create 
a new client address socket structure. You look at this, look at this example. Uh, this is the server. So this part is still the same. We create a socket, empty socket. We fill up the information, the address, the, the family, the address, the port number. Then we bind it, bind this particular socket. Then we start, li we, then we start listening to the socket for incoming handshaking requests. And then we run the accept function. We run the accept function on this, the socket which we were created earlier. So now we're listening to this particular socket. Once the handshake is complete, it will create a new socket, the connected FD. Right? And this connected FD is the one which we will use for writing. We don't use on this listen anymore. Right? So the new socket created after accept is the one which is used to communicate with the client process. So this listening continues listening. So this socket remains. So in other words, we have two sockets now, listen and connected. So the listen one continues listening for new client connections, right? new handshakes coming in, we use listen socket. And then for the connected one, we will use this. Right, so in this case, if you look at the example here, we have seen this earlier. So once the new socket uh, has been accepted, has been uh, accepted, then a new socket ID will be created, which, which will be used to communicate with the client. Right? So in this case, this is a daytime server, so we, pre we prepare the current time and date into a proper format in the buffer, and then we send the buffer, we write the buffer over to this connected socket. So this buffer information will be sent over to the client. And once it's done, we close the socket. Which socket do we close? We close the newly created socket, the connected one. So that means we're saying that after we send this current time and date, the server says, okay, I'm done with you. Right? The client is, if the, the, the process between the client and server is completed. I close the client altogether. But my listening socket is still running. Then I go back to the loop. And then I wait for the next connection coming in. So each, each client coming in will get a new socket. Right, so that's the difference. So the listening socket remains. Right. So while we are accepting it, while we are accepting the new connection coming in from the client, you look at the parameters. First one is the listening uh, socket we, we create. Our second parameter is the it's a socket address. So this socket address is a client socket address. This socket address is, is not the one we create here. We create a server socket address, we put in the server ID, server family type, server port number, and the server IP address. But the one which we use in, in SAP is basically a new one. So we create a new one, client address, which is basically the same type as this server address. And we did not put any, any values into it anywhere. Right? So this client address socket is basically, socket structure is empty. So in other words, we, we, we create an empty socket structure and then we pass that socket structure to accept. So what accept will do, it will fill up the socket structure with the client's information, client's IP number, client's port number. Once, like, once the accept has been completed. Right? So what it means is that the accept will fill up the empty socket structure provided by the server to fill in the client's information. So now the server will know who the client is, which client is the server connected to currently. Right? So this is done by the accept. Right? So on the server side, we need to create an empty socket structure and then we just put in the as pass as parameter, as a value pa pass uh, as pass by reference. Right? We, we pass this particular socket structure here. It will fill up, and then we can start using them. Right? So in this example, we can say that okay, now we can show the client's IP number and port number as it gets connected. So this the how we use it, right? 
So it's a connection from who? Connection from this particular variable and so this one is this, which is this? This is supposed to be the IP number. So we, we get the IP number, where do you get the IP number from? The client IP number will be the one which has been filled up by the accept function. So client scene address. So this will give you the IP address of the client. So before we display it, we must convert its format. Right? So that's why we use the INET network to presentation. So we convert the format into presentation, then we, we get into the string which we'll put it in here. Right? So we extract out the client's IP number, convert the format, use the appropriate conversion function which, function which we have seen earlier, then we can display it. Right? Same thing, we can also get a client's port number, so client address port, and then same thing, we want to display it, we need to convert it from the network type NTOH network to host short. Right? So once you do this, then when you display it here, it will be in, in the correct format. Right? So that's what accept does, right? So that's why we need to supply the client protocol address and its length, right? which will be put into the socket structure. Right, so this will only happen once the socket has been connected. Right? Only then the client information can be obtained. So ASAP run only runs on the server. And as we see seen earlier, we have one listening socket, but one or more connected sockets, one for each client. Right? Right, same thing. The listening socket must still run. We do not do this, but uh, for each new connection coming in, new client coming in, we accept it and then we will create a new socket ID for the each client which will be use it, which we will use to send and receive data between the client and server. Okay. Now let's try to run this and see what happens. Uh, so you, this example you will give. So you do like this, on the server side you will get the display to say that this this client is connecting from which 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 port num uh, which IP number and which port number. So what you do is that try to understand, look through the code, the client client server code again, right? Try to understand again the parameters which we have which we have used, right? And then the function of the socket, what does it return? Now we have gone through in detail each the specific workings of each function, right? The socket, the bind, the listen. You can change the value here if you want. Somebody can try this, remove this listen queue and put a value of say 10 or five. And then run multiple clients and see what happens. See whether it can, it can reach the limit or not. But the, but, but the multiple clients must be Continuously connected, simultaneous connection. So I don't know how you can do that because now the server makes one connection. It makes one connection. It sends you the current time and then it closes quickly. Right. So you might not be able to to do that. Okay. So try to look at this. Also, plus also the client, uh, the client program also. Like, so go and take back look at the, look at the code. Try to understand and see the detailed workings of these particular uh, uh, programs. <clears throat> okay, so you can try that. All right. Uh, now there's there's another thing which we need to try out today. Right. <clears throat> Okay, now, uh, can you stop for a while? Right, so next one, uh, let's do, do a little bit of ex exercise. Not physical exercise, but mental exercise. Right? All right, let's say we, we want to play a game, right? Uh, <clears throat> a client server game. So let's say, I think I appoint you. 
Okay, this, this game works like this. Between two clients and the server, what happens is that it's basically a, a number, guessing, number guessing game. So I guess a number, and then what you do, you will, you will try multiple times. And then you try the number, you say the number, this, I will reply whether it's correct or not. Or I'll say whether it's clo too low or too high. Right? And then you try multiple times, see how many tries does it take to get, to get the number correctly. Right? Okay, so you become the server now. Okay, here's the server. So think of a number between 1 and 100. Don't say it, of course. Got, right? So he got a number, right? So he's come on, stand, 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 so, people, so people can see you. So he got a number. He has picked a number now. Now you, your first client. Okay, you select. You say a number, and then you will, you will respond. Give some clue. Don't say right or wrong. That, that's difficult to predict. So you say whether it's too low, or too high, right? And whatever it is. Okay. Fifty, he says. Too low. Too low, right? So you can continue like that. Uh, 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 you, you, you guys can chip in also. Too low. So continue. I mean, just try. Anybody try? <laughs> okay, so now this is this this is one one server, right? And you are multiple clients. So this is one one version. Now, now another version is this way. Okay, no, thank you. Okay, now you, you become a server. Same thing. Don't worry. Same same, same thing. Come come stand. Okay. So again, now it's, it's slightly different. Now earlier, no, now you you are basically server. You're going to uh, have. Now, each client will play their own game with the server. Means that, let's say, okay, he's the server, right? Now you connect to it, you client connect to it. When, when you connect to it, you say, you put up hand, say, I, I want to play a game with you, right? When he says that, <laughs> when he says that, you will think of a number okay. for him. Oh. And then you correspond, too low, too high, or whatever. Oh. But another person, <laughs> Connects to you. Say, I want to play a game. They will play a game. Another number. Another number. All right. Let's try this. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. You might want to write down something. I think so. Yeah. Okay. No. Write, write a piece. Of, oh, okay. Go, go there. Go there. Go there. Oh, hey, but you, but you, cannot, you cannot show your number. You know. Yes. Ah, you, don't write your number. Oh. Okay. So we we try this. Okay. Who, okay. Who ah. Uh, who, who wants to be volunteer for client? You want to be? Just number only. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. One here, one here, one that side. Client. Okay, two, one and two. I think you can handle two or not. You can handle three. <laughs> okay, then we try two first. Okay. You take the mic. You are saying which client you want to connect? No, you ask for client connection. Which client want to connect? Okay. One client. Okay, right down, client one. Or maybe it's name. So you got so when it says client connected means that you already have number ready for this person. Right? Okay, now you can you can actually give your first number. He says fifty. Okay, any other client? So at the same time, another client can connect because she wants to connect. Uh, another client has connect, request connection, the one at the back. Which client? <laughs> oh, okay. I think you, you need to write secretly, otherwise you, you might forget. <laughs> Running secretly. Okay. All right. So okay, so now these two clients are connected. So you, you say your number, you say your number. Then he will respond. Say whether too low or too high. You understand? Okay, try. At the same time, you, it's supposed to be simultaneous, no? Sorry? 
Eighteen. Eight, eight zero. Oh, eight zero. Um, two hundred. Go on. I mean, you can go on. A, a new clients can re request connection anytime. Oh, Anybody who wants to connect, pick up, put up a hand. A little bit low. Ah, there. That's another one. <laughs> he put up his. He wants to connect. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um twenty two to high. You must you must remember which client, which number you know. <laughs> Don't mix up the numbers. What? You want to request a connection. <laughs> she requested. No? Okay. She requested. No no. Somebody put up the hand. Oh that was then. Oh you are. Twenty. Twenty. Too high for him. Too high. Too high for him. Correct. Oh, just luck. Just lucky. So once once is once is correct, connection closed, right? So you can you can delete from there. That's the idea. So like so, do you like this game? You know why I'm saying this? That's the assignment. Oh, okay. uh, so, so now you know what it's all about. So now you you are play the game. You will know what to when you look at this. It'll be easier this way.